large courses, what matters is, is modularity, being able to cut the pieces up uh, in chunks so that you can repeat those chunks, and regularity so that they see one, you know, each module sort of physically is structured similar to the other ones. Those, those, those are things that worked for me because they, they, if it's a small group interaction, then I can, I can kind of help them, guide them, respond to their individual needs a little bit more easily. But with a large group like that, I'm relying on the, on the course structure to kind of guide them a bit. Um, I, but anyway, the, it was very, I mean, the whole thing was extremely helpful, and I felt like I learned a ton about how to do that. Um, this is stuff that I got from you guys that's been super helpful. My, my welcome page is a, is a several step sort of like, you don't know what you're doing, here's how you get started sort of thing, where there's a, just a short intro to, from, from me personally. And then I actually took a, like a video of me going through the parts, like through the module to point out where the, to click and things like that. And that was super helpful. I, mean, I think I've gotten, I've gotten no questions about how to physically use the Blackboard system. And all the questions have been about, like, is it appropriate for me to do this or that? Um, most of which I've been. Yeah, I just, yeah, I just, I, show, I showed them literally like how to go through it, and they, they I haven't had any questions about that. Um, so let's see here. this is reverse of my <laughs> mouse. Um, so I'll just like, I've got it split up in a different top. The modules are different topics. We're in the third module for this course right now, and I'm releasing them in chunks because I, I don't want them to get too far ahead of where I'm at. But the modules are set up. I guess I've got it on edit mode, so I should change it so that you can see what they see. Um, but all of the modules have the same structure, and all of the, the parts of them are numbered basically the same way and with the same titles, just different, so that different numbers. So these are, this is the module number, and this is the element number. Oops. <laughs> I skipped ahead there. But, uh, and, and, so, and each one is structured the same way, so there's an introduction, a journal reflection, um, and then New knowledge is either videos by me or uh, sort of structured reading, uh, and then there are comprehension checks. I've also one of the things that I that I did that you guys convinced me to do that I think is really helpful is I've, I've re I'm relying really heavily on self-assessments, and there are graded assignments peppered throughout it, but I've got I'm giving them lots of opportunities to do just to self-assess, and I think initially I was worried about that because I thought like why would you you know you're a student you get substitute why would you do that they're all doing it. Um, I think because they think, well, you know, it helps me do better on the other side. I'm just, I'm just, the numbers of that, they're doing, they're doing it. Um, and I haven't gotten any complaints about that. Can you describe one of the self-assessments? Yeah. So some of, them are, some of them are as simple as uh, multiple choice quizzes that ask them about the things that I think are most important about the reading. Some of them are um, journal entries that ask them to respond to particular prompts, and then uh, they're paired with future uh, journal entries that ask them to respond to their previous entry. Um, and so those ones, I'm checking on those. I'm not, you know, and they know that. I'm looking at them. And there's, I, I'm, I give them signals that I'm looking at them, but I don't give them grades on them. So I'll just, you know, I'll stick a comment in here or there, or I'll, I'll I have a way of tracking how many of them they've done and a way of, ch like, basically what I did is I, I assigned, there are 14 journal entries throughout the course. Of the course. I gave the journal a score of 14. And I add, I add a point every time that I see one of their journal entries. So at the end of the course, it should be 14. So that's just, and I told them, these, are, these aren't points that go into your final score. They just, but you know that I saw all of your journal entries and that they're not, you didn't just type right in the keyboard or something. Um, so, and all those things are going to factor into uh, participation. And then, but, and then for, every, for, every, for every module, there's a, there's a short writing assignment and one graded quiz. And they always know that every for every one, there's those two graded assignments, and that those collectively plus some exams make up their their grade. So I'm just very clear about like what I want them to do, and and all of the modules have this exact same structure too. So they, once they've done it once or twice, they're they're ready yeah, to. Yeah, I know you had a pretty ambitious uh, start, uh, you know, thinking about how to get the students really uh, doing. Uh, philosophy, essentially, yeah. as opposed to just repeating back sure. what you told them. How did that work out? What was the key to? to well, so uh, I'm hoping. So I, I don't know. I don't know 100 whether that's worked or not. Um, to be perfectly honest, I'm the way that I'm approaching it is I'm not giving them lectures that just repeat the content of the readings. Uh, I might do something more along that form if I were in person because I can get immediate feedback from them. 
but I'm, I'm doing it in a way that sort of highlights particular parts that I think are especially difficult, and then being explicitly clear with them that I expect that they're accountable for stuff outside of what, we're, what I'm talking about. But these are the hard, I'm helping you through the hardest parts. Uh, and then I've got, I've got methods for them to like talk, the discussion boards are playing a pretty big role. I'm surprised at how many people are participating in it. Um, I'm you know, encouraged by that. Lecture attendance is very low. Uh, I don't know whether that's because, I mean, I, I suspect it's because they can watch them as recordings and they're just waiting to, to do that, but I'd say it's less than, it's less than 8%. Um, yeah. But what time do you do your lectures? I do my lectures on Wednesday. Yeah, that, that might matter. I do them when I do them at regular at a regular time. Uh, Wednesdays at ten thirty in the morning. Uh, it's I figured it's a it's a but it, you know people are in classes and stuff, so there's a good chance that that's what's going on. Maybe it's too early for some of them. Uh, you know, people said, well, why don't you do lectures at different times of the week? And it's just not convenient for me to do it since it's, it's recorded in any way. Yeah, and the other issue with that is. How do we, I'm thinking about Schellenberg, how do we put that into the course schedule? Like, yeah. sometimes it's going to be Tuesdays at 8, sometimes it's going to be when, it's got to be some kind of structure. I think the regularity matters a lot yeah. for a large course. They just, you know, knowing, for them knowing when stuff is coming matters more than any, anything else. And if I'm, and it's, it's part of my, like, it's part of the um, contract on my end to just be extremely clear about what I want them to do. And so that regularity is part of that. How did you handle assessment uh, overall, but apart from the self-assessment? Oh, um, so the the things that are that are actually assessed, there are um, there are basically three different different things that are actually assessed, and then there's a sort of um, participation grade that's holistic and that's a little bit harder to assess. But I but it, it turns out that um, it's pretty easy to track participation uh, in discussion boards and just making sure the journals are okay and stuff. The, uh, the act so I've got one thing I have them do is I, I always have them do one graded reading quiz. Uh, they know which one it is and they know how big it's going to be and how many questions it is. I have them do one writing assignment per module. It's short necessarily because I don't have much help um, grading. I have a like a little bit of help grading. I have about um, two to five hours a week of somebody, but the rest of it's on me. Uh, so I can't give them, I'd like to give them longer writing assignments, but I just physically can't do it. So those are, those end up being about um, two paragraphs to a page long. Uh, so I grade one of those for each student. And then there are exams that are basically those two assignments, but in one assignment, and they're, um, they have 24 hours or 48 hours per exam. And those aren't written, those are quotes. There, there are multiple choice. Yeah, well, part of it will be multiple choice, but then, then it's got two, two short essays. So basically, instead of the single two paragraph essay, it's two one paragraph short answer responses. And, you know, I would love, you know, normally in my, I will say this, like in my in person classes that are smaller, these, the, the, the workload for them writing wise is much, much heavier. You know, it's much heavier. I, you know, I have them, I'll have my higher. Or a level like my upper division undergraduates writing 15 pages plus over the course of a semester, and my graduate students writing much more than that. So it's I can't do it though. Like it's just not it's just not possible. And the, my my way of dealing with that has been to break assignments up into very small pieces and have them frequently, and then to rely pretty heavily on self assessment and just try to be confident that about the fact that because an assignment is not graded does not mean that it's not a valuable part of what they're, what they're taking in and learning. And that I have, to, I have to be able to sort of release a little bit of responsibility to the students to, to, take, to take that responsibility on as learners. And it's hard to do because you know that they're kids. You know that they don't, they don't always do it. But some of them do, many of them do. And yeah. Seniors and majors are not they're not majors. They're mostly sophomores and juniors. Yeah, um, I have a lot of students who are uh, almost yeah almost not, none of them are majors. A lot of them are taking this course because it fulfills requirements for their for their major. Um, it's an extra challenge for, for a philosophy course. Yeah, because I have one of the things I have to do, and I have to resist the temptation to do, is to defend the practice of philosophy on a regular basis. Because a lot of them, you know, I get I know from the journal entries that people say like. There's no, they'll say things like, well, look, you, you, there's no, you, 
these philosophers aren't, aren't agreeing. There's nobody comes to an agreement here. So therefore, there, no agreement can be come to, be arrived at. And so we shouldn't do this. Uh, and you want to jump in and say, like, oh, God, no. That's not good. Uh, but, but you can't, you just can't get engaged in that. <laughs> You'd be doing it all the time. Yeah. For grading the writing, did you, did you use Turnitin? Oh, yeah. So yeah, for the writing, I'm using Turnitin. Uh, journals are in the Blackboard environment. Uh, which has been pretty uh, pretty usable. The, um, the but yeah, turn it in for, for the writing assignments. And they they all seem familiar and comfortable with it. I, don't, I haven't had any problems with that. The the way the Blackboard uses the uses it seems pretty easy for them to. to do. The way I actually did it was I have links. I have a sort of module that links to a page, another page that has all of the writing assignment links for turn it in listed. Yeah, it's it's actually it's right uh, all the available ones listed. So when they go to the module page that says writing assignment, it describes the assignment, and then they click the link and it takes them here. And they, they click on the appropriate one and, and fill it out. Um, I might have to revise that. I have, I've had maybe two, but well, I don't know if this counts as a reason to revise. So I've had two or three out of 160 put it in the wrong place. And then wrote me an email saying I put it in the wrong place. And, <laughs> and I got to deal with that. But that's not, you know, that's part of the reason. Yeah, I, should, I probably should be. <laughs> Yeah, it's going it's going fine, and it's the, the modularity is very helpful for me because I, I can I can just I can construct a module struct like um, the skeleton of it and fill in the content, and I know what's missing. I know what I need to do next. I don't feel like I'm. It doesn't feel like I'm. You know, it's a, an entirely generative creative act every single time I start a module. I have something to work from. 